So I'm going to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to start uh, going through the definition of our name, monitoring and forecasting center. And so starting with monitor is uh, defined as a device used for observing, checking, or keeping a continuous record of something. And I think this uh, describes very well what we are doing with our model and observation, trying to monitor the state of the sea from the physical point of view in this case, starting from the past with the reanalysis, going back uh, 25, 30 years, and then uh, also with the uh, uh, INCAST uh, to be able to start with the forecast. And so monitor is like, uh, I like to think is as uh, heart monitoring of the ocean that I think is a very good images of what we are trying to do with uh, uh, the MFCs. And then forecast is much more easy probably to understand in this community is what we provide in terms of uh, future evolution of the sea. And uh, all our systems are providing from five to 10 days of forecast uh, in the future. So keeping this in mind, let's uh, look at how we are organized. As has already been said, we have uh, global ocean systems that are covering all the oceans and then we have uh, regional systems covering all the European uh, regional seas that are shown in these uh, pictures. In these pictures, uh, uh, I show the salinity field from the uh, global uh, uh, high resolution system. And as you can see, there are three semi-enclosed uh, regional seas that you can easily identify looking at the salinity. So there is the Baltic with very low uh, salinity values. So I mean very low compared to the mean ocean value of salinity. Uh, the Black Sea uh, that uh, is uh, connected through a complex strait system to the Mediterranean Sea that has as well a quite low salinity. And then there is uh, the third semi-enclosed basin that is the Mediterranean Sea that instead is evaporation basin where the salinity is higher than uh, the mean uh, salinity of the ocean. And then we have another system that is the Arctic that is focused on the Arctic area, uh, looking into detail of the uh, dynamics uh, of that complex uh, area. Uh, we have a system focused uh, on uh, the shelf uh, area, so the extended continental shelf that uh, is uh, in the North Sea and around the UK and the Irish coast. And another system that is covering uh, as well the Irish and all the French, uh, Spain and uh, uh, Portugal coast going down till the North Africa covering the uh, Atlantic. Each of these systems has its own characteristic from the oceanographic point of view, and this is one of the reasons why we need to have specific system to monitor them. Uh, here there is a table with a very short summary of the differences between the systems in terms of resolution. And you can see that uh, resolution can vary quite a lot going from one system uh, to the other in terms of uh, horizontal resolution and also in terms of uh, different uh, discretization that uh, is used for the verticals. We have, we have systems that uh, have geopotential uh, coordinates, others that have uh, isopignals or uh, Z-sigma uh, coordinates, depending from the characteristic of the area where they are applied. And, uh, here there is a little bit more wide overview of the systems. These are the resolution and the characteristics of the systems in real time, uh, where you can see that some have uh, uh, elements like, for example, tides that others don't have, and uh, some are coupled to other components that would be described by my colleagues later in the day, like uh, a biogeochemical model or a wave component. And looking now how this system would evolve from now till the end of uh, uh, Copernicus uh, in this phase of contract, uh, we can see here highlighted in red what uh, are going to be the uh, next modification. So uh, there is just one system that is going to increase the horizontal resolution, that is the Arctic, that is going from 12 kilometers to six and three kilometers, so it's quite an important increase in resolution. Some are increasing the number of vertical levels, 
And uh, what I think is the major development for the real-time system in the next uh, uh, couple of years, or a little bit less that we have till the end of this contract, is the increased complexity, so adding components to the system. As you can see at the end, all the regionals will have the tides, and uh, they will increase the um, connection with uh, the biogeochemical and uh, the wave component. I'm not going through the same table for the reanalysis, just uh, um, not to provide you too many details altogether, but what we are trying to do is to keep the reanalysis system as much as possible close to the real time. But of course, if you look at the catalog, there are discrepancies, especially in terms of horizontal resolution of the products. And this is simply due to the cycle of evolution of the system, because it requires time for being able to produce a high resolution reanalysis once the model capabilities <coughs> and the system has been developed. And so looking at the similar table for the reanalysis, you can see that instead there is an increase in horizontal resolution in most of the reanalysis products from now till the end of the contract, trying to have the same resolution in uh, both the products. But there will be always a bit of discrepancy because uh, it's really difficult to keep all the systems aligned for the real time and the reanalysis. All the systems have data simulation and uh, uh, for both reanalysis and real time, I'm simulating satellite product for SST and for sea level, coming from Copernicus, from the Sentinel um, satellites or other available satellites, and uh, simulate also subsurface temperature and salinity profiles, and in the system where there is an ice component, also ice observation. Um, but so. Uh, in uh, going through the uh, type of evolution that this system can uh, go through, uh, this could be, as I already mentioned, uh, a modification of the model resolution. Sorry, I have, a <coughs> uh, uh, I have a bit of a problem with my voice, but I hope it's going to be fine till the end of the presentation. So, as I was saying, so we can increase the model resolution. Uh, and I will provide an example of what could be the impact. We can uh, change the model parameterization, and uh, there will be an example from the Arctic MFC. We can modify the components of the products, like adding different components to the uh, surface current velocity, as has been done uh, for the global. Uh, there we can improve or add the data simulation if it's missing, and then we can work on the interconnection between the regional and the global and among uh, the different uh, uh, regional systems at uh, uh, their border. And so here is an example of a surface current from the Novo Shelf system at uh, low resolution. This is seven kilometers. And I hope you can spot some differences when we make the same plot uh, with the system at 1.5 kilometer of resolution. And then, so if you want to look a little bit more into detail and trying to intercompare, you can see that there are much more uh, structure at the mesoscale uh, level because uh, the model at 1.5 is eddy resolving, instead at 7 is not. And then if you zoom into the Norwegian coastal current that is flowing uh, along the Norway coast, we can see that uh, with 1.5, we can resolve the meanders and the eddy that are driving this current from south to north. Instead, at seven kilometers, all these features are missing. And this is an example of what is the level of information that we provide to the users when we increase the resolution. Another example is uh, what we can do to improve uh, some uh, uh, parameterization in our model. And this is an example uh, from the Arctic MFC, where they are uh, um, coupling the, um, uh, um, the hydrodynamical model with the wave component. And they have done some uh, tests to identify what is the best parameterization for the Langmuir circulation. 
and they have tested several uh, configuration against the control run, and what I'm showing in this picture is the root mean square error. And uh, so the black line, I hope you can spot it, is the control run, and then the different colors are uh, a different experiment. The one that uh, has been uh, chosen is the one that is the dashed line with a sort of bluish color, hopefully you can see it, that, uh, as it's written in the slide, has no degradation in winter when the error is already quite high and has an improvement during the summer. So these are all processes that we are trying to do in order to improve the information that uh, um, we provide to the user. So I forgot to mention that the field that is represented in the slide is the mix layer depth because the vertical mixing is strongly influenced uh, by this parameterization. Another example is more in term, oriented in terms of the impact on products. So the global ocean at 1 12th of degree is uh, delivering hourly surface currents and since uh, the last uh, uh, service uh, uh, evolution, is delivering also an addition, uh, two additional components that are uh, hourly wave currents that are uh, uh, derived from the Stokes drift interpolated from the wave uh, global product that has, is at uh, one tenth of resolution. And then also the hourly tide currents derived from first 2014 uh, tide model. And, uh, uh, they provide both the three components and also the sum of them. And as you can see in the panels that are shown in this picture, the different components can contribute differently in the different areas. So this is an example for March 2018, where is represented the uh, percentage of contribution for each component. As you can see, let's say the Navier Stokes of the uh, surface velocity that, coming, that is coming from uh, the NEMO model is uh, most everywhere is the major component. Uh, but then if you look at the Stokes drift in some areas at the high latitudes, it could be quite important. And I guess that uh, this contribution has a high variability in seasons and probably also interannually. Instead, the tides that has not a seasonal variability and not interannual. But so we can see that uh, most everywhere in the global ocean has, uh, is, uh, has a very small uh, contribution, but in few areas where there is an external continental shelf, the contribution is predominant. And I think that it's really important that we are able to derive, uh, to deliver all this information uh, to the users. So. Another example is about the impact of data simulation. So as I said at the very beginning, all the systems have uh, data simulation, but the Baltic MFC, but they are working in order to add this component to their system pretty soon. And this is an example of the experiment that they are doing for the assimilation of SST in their region. And as you can see, they have quite uh, a big improvement doing uh, SST data simulation, and they will implement uh, um, univariate SST data simulation as first step uh, with, the next, with the release of November 2019, and then as a second step, they will add also the assimilation of subsurface temperature and uh, salinity profiles. Uh, the data simulation has been recently added, so sort of one year ago, if I remember well, in the EB, uh, MFC, and here is an example. In this case, it's a multivariate data simulation because they assimilate SS SST, sea level anomaly, and subsurface profiles of temperature and salinity. And here we can see again that in some specific area, like around the Canary Island and in the West Med, the impact of the data simulation is to improve um, the quality of the products that are delivered to the users. So another important issue, as I was mentioning uh, uh, at the very beginning, is the interconnection between the different uh, regional seas and the global uh, system. We are trying to have a, what is defined as a seamless uh, um, uh, uh, differences going from one system to the others. 
this is done nesting one system into the other is not always uh, that easy and there are areas that uh, are uh, difficult like for example the connection between the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. In that area there is a complex uh, uh, structure with the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus Strait that are very narrow so they could be less than one kilometer and uh, are very long. So it's really difficult to properly resolve with uh, our model the uh, flow uh, that goes uh, across this strait. So the um, Black Sea uh, MFC has decided to go for uh, a specific model that uh, is uh, based on a uh, structured grid for the Turkish Strait uh, systems that is covering all the area that is shown from the mesh of the model in this picture. And so it's connecting the Black Sea with the Aegean Sea, so with the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, being able to resolve the Bosphorus and the Dardanelles because it has a horizontal resolution that varies from uh, three kilometers in the open sea area, then goes down to 500 meters in the coastal zone and uh, uh, is uh, of uh, 50 meters in the Dardanelles and Bosphorus Straits so that they are uh, able to really um, model the flow across the strait. And then, for, uh, just for example, a result from this system where we have the salinity, as we can see, uh, the strait is complex and also the gradient uh, in salinity is uh, really steep because we go from uh, 15 PSU in the Black Sea to more than 38 the PSU in the Aegean Sea. So it's a very delicate uh, equilibrium. And so I think that it's really an important development that is not operational yet, but is going uh, to be operational uh, soon and is going to improve um, probably the resolution in both systems. At the same time, the Mediterranean Sea, waiting for this development from the Black Sea, has tried to improve uh, their forcing in uh, um, the Dardanelles area. And uh, while before uh, it was just, uh, in the model was just parameterized as a surface forcing, like a river input, they have now developed a new uh, version of their system where they have instead a proper upper boundary and they are nested in the global and are using some climatological values for the velocity and the salinity trying to better estimate the inflow from the uh, Dardanelles. And here is the impact uh, mm, making a comparison between the old system that is in red and the new system that is in blue against an Argo profile that is the Argo profile that is highlighted in green or blue, I don't know which color is it for you, in the Aegean Sea. And if you look at the dash line that is the model background, so the model before assimilating that Argo, we can see that uh, in the old model, the one that is the river-like parameterization, uh, there is quite a huge difference uh, in the first uh, 50 meters of the water column between the salinity measured by the Argo profile and the salinity uh, from the model. And uh, if you look at the blue line, this is really much better, has improved and has decreased quite a lot. And this is very evident if you look in the other panel that is about the bias. And so the bias goes down from uh, 0.8 to close to zero. So it's really a promising uh, um, improvement in their system. And so, and hopefully then uh, will improve uh, again uh, once there will be the um, Turkish system uh, model. So just to summarize what uh, uh, we are doing. So we are trying to increase the resolution of our systems and we have done this more in the real time in the past couple of years. And now we are trying to transfer this know-how to the reanalysis production. Uh, we are trying to add tides to most of our systems, and so tides will be added in the next uh, uh, year to the Arctic, the Mediterranean, and the Black Sea. Uh, the system will increase the level of coupling between the different uh, uh, components and we are constantly trying to reduce the gap between the end of the reanalysis time series and the present. This has been already reduced quite a lot since the beginning of Copernicus, but what we are trying to achieve is to really have a very small gap that is going to be less than one year, 
hopefully. So there are a lot of challenges and a lot of work that we still have to do. And then, so I really want to uh, share with you this uh, historical uh, photo. So the system are developing and the people involved in the development of the systems as well. So this was before Copernicus. This was uh, at uh, my ocean meeting in 2014. So I leave you as activity for the coffee break to spot who is still around, who is aging well, <laughs> who is doing someone else. So this is just for you, but just to, so there are, is a work that uh, is really, uh, where we are now is due to several years of work altogether. So I really thank all my colleagues. Thank you, Marina. I'm sorry we don't have much time for questions. Maybe one very quick one. 